I love each of you, and we look forward, Lord willing, to be back in September. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for giving a place where people come and feel safe to come, bring their family, and, and just be here. Amen. And I, I can't say that about all camp meetings. Amen. I know we're alive, but I can't say that about all, all camp meetings. And I'm thankful. Amen. And I want to say this to you parents. Uh, a lot of y'all have been here every morning, every night with kids. Right. And uh, how many of y'all got a hickory switch at arm's reach? Would you just lift it up and wave it around? Amen. That's called a magic wand. There's, there's hickory switches all through this thing. And and listen, you mamas especially, uh, a lot of times the daddies are doing other things, especially if they're a part of the ministry, they're doing other things. I want to thank you mamas for being consistent. Uh, I want to thank y'all for being faithful. Because you think they're not hearing, but they are hearing. Yes, Even if it's just a sentence per service up until they're about six years old and they're willing to sit there. And if they ain't sitting there right by, by five or six, it ain't the kids' fault. Amen. 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 Can, I give, can I give a pointer? If you go out with that hickory switch and they come in still screaming, screaming and crying and fighting you, you don't need to come back in yet. Yeah. That's what Brother Morgan would do if he was here. Amen. 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 If they're still fighting you, amen, the little little slap ain't going to help in the pew. That just agitates them. Take them out and fire them up. Somebody say amen. Amen. I know we're alive and that makes folks nervous, but amen. If you can't control them at three, man, I hate for them at 16. Amen. Anyways, I'm sorry, Brother Billy Ray. You prayed for me right there. Amen. But I want to thank y'all. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for being here. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Yes, right. Amen. 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 Let's turn to the reading and reverence of God's Word. I thank, uh, I thank Brother Billy Ray. I was shouting before church. I wasn't in the glory. I was just thanking God that I didn't have to preach after somebody tonight. Uh, he made me preach after Brother Jacob Bogard. On Monday, he made me preach after Brother Gary Chris. On Wednesday... And thank God Brother Todd McKeon's preaching second tonight. I got so happy about it, I left my pew during singing, went all the way around there, put my arm around Brother Todd, and I was worshiping with Brother Todd. Amen. So I bless the Lord for that. I love you, Brother Todd, and I am praying for you. I want to preach what God's put on my heart and get out of your way. Genesis 13, verse 1, and Abram, listen, can, I, can I give a disclaimer? His name is Abram in this text. After I get through reading the text, I will call him Abraham the rest of the night. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot uh, with him into the south. That's a blessing. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, under the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai. And unto the, uh, the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. There's that Canaanite. Where's Brother Dean? Somebody said, where's Brother Dean? Amen. There's that Canaanite right there. If you haven't been here long, you won't understand that. Amen. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, uh, as thou comest unto Zoar. By the way, all of that's desert now. Every bit of it. It's desert. It's where the Dead Sea is. I, I, I don't have time to preach that. Leave me alone, Brother Jacob. 
Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, after the Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and just thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land and the length of it and the breadth of it, for uh, I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed the tent, or his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, dear Lord. I thank you for all you've done for us today. Thank you for your wonderful provision today, dear God, for the gospel ministry. Lord, I thank you for this church, this place, dear Lord, these people, Brother Billy Ray, our friendship here. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I pray, dear God, thank you for what our hearts have heard uh, this week. I pray, dear God, that you fill us with the Spirit tonight. Drive labor hindrance, bind the force of hell and the devil and the flesh in the world tonight. Pull down the strongholds that might hinder the word of God from going forth tonight. Please use your servant. Help me to give this to these people like you gave it to me. Lord, I love you. I praise you. Give you glory for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. Might be seated. Uh, tonight, I'll give you a very brief introduction. And then we'll try to be as brief as we can in the message and deliver what God's put on our heart. The first thing I want to notice in this text is there's a survival in this text. In verse number 1, the Bible says, And Abram went out of Egypt. Amen. And I want to tell you, Abram was out of the will of God going to Egypt. Amen. But glory to God, he was able to uh, go through Egypt a little while. He went to the world a little while, but he was able to come up out of Egypt. Amen. Now, may I say that not everybody always comes back out of Egypt. Say amen right there. Uh, though Egypt's the top of the world in your Bible. And though Abraham came out of Egypt, Brother Russell, he brought some baggage with him. Amen. I won't re-preach the other night's message, but hey, Hagar is came out of Egypt. Amen. Lot got his thirst for Sodom and Gomorrah because Uncle Abraham took him to Egypt. Right. So there, though Abraham came out almost seemingly unscathed, there was a lot of baggage that Abraham brought out of Egypt with him that haunted him and his family the rest of his life. So can I say tonight, don't ever go to Egypt. Amen. 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 And it's a lot more likely that you'll survive it if you just never go. Amen. Amen. So we see some Bible in this text. In verse number 2, we see that God really begins to bless Abraham and we see success in this text. Amen? Now, I want to say this. Uh, uh, success doesn't always come in silver and gold and cattle and tents, uh, but I'll tell you that God will bless your life. He may not bless you uh, with gold and silver and tents, but He will bless your life with success if you'll just have some boldness and come out of Egypt tonight. Uh, so we see survival. We we see success. Uh, number three, we see sensibility. In verse number three, uh, he went on his journey and he ended up going to the south. Somebody say amen right there. That's yeah. a lot of sense right there. Makes sense. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, he keeps going a little further and he comes to a place called Bethel. Amen. You know where Abraham found God? He found God the last time place he found God and that was in Bethel. You know what the word Bethel means? It means the house of God. Hey, you know what? He came out of Egypt and God started blessing him and he realized, you know what? I need some fellowship. You know what? I need some authority. You know what? I need some a moving of God. I need to hear from God again. And Brother Todd, he didn't go to the mooses and the gooses. He didn't go to the social club. He didn't go to the ball field. And you know where Abraham went to hear from God? He went back to the last place he heard from God and that was the house of God. I will tell you what every family in here needs tonight. It's not a sport team. You don't need more family time. You don't need a Spock or a, a doctor or a psychiatrist. You don't need more TV time. Somebody say it. I'll tell you what every family, every home, every marriage, every individual needs in here. Hey, you need the house of God. You need to get your family in the house of God. Plan on there before any more destruction takes place. Get your home. Get your family. Plan it in a local assembly. Get yourself under a man of God. Plant your feet there and stay. There ain't nothing your family needs more in the house of God tonight. You need the authority of the man of God in your life. You need the authority of the 
church in your life. You need the hand of God on your life. God will never bless your family. God will never bless your home. God will never bless your ministry. God will never bless your life like He wants to unless you get at the house of God. Amen. 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 Everything God's doing in and through this generation, He's doing in and through the church. Yes. Amen. 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 And it salvaged his home. Right. Amen. Yeah. He had no sense to get back to the house of God. Yeah. You can't stay out of Egypt on your own. You need the house of God. Right. You need the people of God. You need the, the fellowship of God's people. You need the accountability of God's people. You need the authority of the man. Did I say you need the authority of the local church and the man of God? And you need somebody that's keeping you in check. You need accountability to make sure you're not going off in some heresy or some carnality. You need the house of God for people to sharpen you. You need the fellowship. You need the encouragement. You need the exhortation. You can't do this thing alone. Well, that's not what I come to preach now. There it is. I see the survival. I see the success. I see the sensibility. Verse 4, we see the seeking. It's the first time. See, we read verse after verse. But a lot of times we realize, we don't realize that there's, there could be 10 years between two verses. It's been a long time since Abraham called on the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. In verse number 4, the Bible says, Under the place of the altar which he had made there at the first, and there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. I wonder if you're seeking God tonight. I wonder how you, I understand this can't be, but if, uh, once the meeting's over, are you going to seek God? Are you going to follow after God? Amen. This is what's going to make the difference. Alright? But I want to get to verses 5 through 18 tonight. And in verses 5 through 18, I notice in verse number 9, Verse number 11 and verse number 14, a word popped up. In verse number 9, the Bible says, Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself. Yes. Verse number 11, Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves. Verse number 14, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him. That is the first mention of separate in your Bible. Yeah. And it is the first mention of separated in your Bible. And tonight, with the Lord's help, I want to preach on this thought. Biblical separation from a brother. See, this, we often think about separation is from some something, don't, don't we? Is that right? We that's how we have to we preach that what? But it's not so much the what's in our life that gives us the problem, it's the who. Matter of fact, our favorite verse on separation, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, come out from among yeah. them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Yeah. And touch not the unclean thing. Brother Alverson, I believe the Lord, here's the first mention, He's more focused on the who's we need to separate than from the what's yeah. we need to separate. And you say, preacher, this is a very odd topic for a kid. You're telling me. I had that discussion with the Lord today. But I'm going to tell you, I believe it's needed. You say, how do you know that? Because we find this principle in the New Testament. We find a man named Paul and Barnabas. And we see Paul and Barnabas. You say, which one was wrong? I don't know. Yeah. Which one was right? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe one was just more right than the other. That's all I can see. Because both of them left. They kept serving God. They kept doing right. Here's a, 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 a Paul's a Paul's mentor, the man that really discipled Paul after he got out of the three years of being by himself with the Lord in the Scriptures. And Brother Mark, here we find a, a contention that got so bad that they had to separate from one another. And in, in Luke 17, Jesus even tells you, he makes a promise that, that, that offenses are going to come. Right. That's a biblical promise from Jesus. Yeah. That all offenses shall come. But woe unto him by whom the offense cometh. Yeah. Amen. Brother Russell, tonight it is inevitable. And you may not need this tonight. I do it. I need it. 
You, you do need it whether you realize it or not. But if you're serving God, if you're going the right direction, if you're trying to live for God, if you're trying to raise your family by that Bible, if you're trying to live your life by that Word, it is inevitable. Jesus said it would be. He gave us many Old Testament uh, examples, many New Testament examples. There is going to come a time where you have to separate from somebody you love, that you're going to have to separate from somebody that may even be a brother and sister in Christ. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be the first to admit it tonight. I have had to do this before, and I've not always done it right. right. Yeah. And if we're going to face this, if it's coming, Brother Todd, if this is inevitable, and, and anybody that's been in the ministry any amount of time, we've had to face this, and we've not always handled it right. Brother Philip, if this is inevitable, why don't we see how the Bible says to do it? Right. The first thing we're going to do, if we're going to have to, if we're going to have a biblical separation from a brother, we're going to see in verses 6 through 7, we got to recognize some things. Verse 6, the Bible says, And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite, the Perizzite, dwelled then in the land. The first thing we're going to have to realize is what's the problem. The, the first thing we see is that there's strife. This is the first mention of strife in your Bible as well. It's between two brothers. Amen. And Brother Todd, we see that the issue is conflict, is strife. Did you know that it's not necessary to have strife and conflict between one another? You know what? Me and Brother Jacob has spent two days together. Today we, we went and rode to, uh, what was the town? We Franklinton. And we spent time together. You know, we, we didn't disagree on one thing. You know why? Because we're going the same direction. Amen. That's right. Brethren that are going the same direction, there won't be conflict. There won't be strife. You know why Paul and Barnabas had conflict and strife it's and contention? Brother Daniel, it's because they ended up, they, they, they still believed the same way, but they got a, a burn in their saddles and they had to start going different directions. And that's what causes conflict. Hey, ask yourself, the people that you're closest to, do they believe in the biblical principles that you believe in? Do they practice the biblical principles that you practice? Are they going in the same direction you're going in? I'm going to tell you, it's a very serious thing. There's people I love and I care for, but we are going in the different directions and it ends up causing conflict. Me and Brother Jacob, I didn't even think about this, but when we were pulling in, we were talking about our friendship and the, one of the reasons we're so close is because we're trying to go the same direction. Yeah. Who, which direction are you going? Is there conflict? We see what to recognize if there's conflict. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Yeah. And then we see why. Why is there conflict? We need to recognize these things. I'll tell you. Look at verse number 6. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great. Y'all see that? Say, so, preacher, why, did, why was there conflict? Lot got to the point where Uncle, where Uncle Abraham was was a little too tight for him. Y'all see that? Lot got to the point where his not only his family leader, but his spiritual leader was holding it a little too tight for him. Well, I didn't get any amens there, so that means that's where we need to preach. Amen. Amen. Brother Jacob, I know there are people in this, this area that have visited North Spring Baptist Church. And if Brother Billy Ray would quit preaching on two or three specific things, they have to build three sizes this building to house everybody that would come around. They like our worship. They like our songs. They even like the way we preach. They don't always like what we preach, but they like the way we preach. Amen. And Brother Gregory, it, it just boils down to if we just quit preaching on two or three specific things, if we just loosen up on this, that, or the other, they wouldn't mind dwelling with us. They're probably saved. They're probably, Brother Russell, good people, decent people. They probably love the same Lord that we love. But the fact of the matter is, it's just a little too tight yeah. for them around North Spoon Baptist Church. Yeah. Amen. Mm, I 
I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. Hammer down, preacher. Brother Jacob, I don't want there to ever come a time where we, our friendship is broken because I, maybe, maybe you got a little too tight yeah. for Brother Chris. Right. Or vice versa. Right. Amen. Not that we should both be growing. That's the point. Yes, sir. It got to a point where Lot did not want to be with Abraham anymore because it was too tight for him. There was too many boundaries. Do you really mean we have to stay in this land? You mean we really have to stay here? Can't you see? We could we could have so many more herds right. if yeah. we just loosen up the boundaries. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. Brother Billy Ray, I said, they, he got it in his mind. We, we could expand right. if you just take some boundaries down. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, preacher, you're talking to me tonight. Well, of course I am. I ain't preaching to everybody out there, preacher. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder tonight, has it gotten a little too tight around here? Maybe the reason you won't plant your, your family at a church or your home at a church or your marriage at a church or an individual at the church is because it's just a little too tight. I'm going to tell you tonight, I'd rather be with Uncle Michael, Abraham. Yeah. I would rather have the boundaries. Because see, the boundaries aren't burdens. That boundaries are not bondage. Those boundaries are blessings. Amen. Amen. Can I tell one little story right quick? I remember when I was at Derry, there was a, a, a cow named, uh, we, they had chains on them and they had little numbers, and she was 35. I may have told this here before, but I'm going to tell it again. Brother Van, I, I remember 35 because she had a bum right hook. Even when I went to work there, she had a bum right hook. And she, was, she was still giving milk. She could still get around. But I, I, every day when I would go out to the pasture in the mornings, I'd call her. She would be the last one that would walk in the dairy barn with me. Brother Will, she would be the last one through the dairy barn. And, and when we would go out, or I would go out in the evening, she would be the last one to come in. And, and she, most of those cows were a little skittish. And, and so, but she would walk up right beside me and she would rub her head on me and all this stuff. She's my pal, all right? Y'all with me? And uh, one day I went out to get the cows and I noticed that 35 wasn't there, brother son. I mean, she wasn't there rubbing her head on my shoulder. And I'm hollering, come on now, come on now. I mean, normally I ain't having to fight her. And it was real hard for her to get around, brother Gregory. She would be. She wouldn't go that far into the pasture because it took her longer to get in and out. So she she stayed close to the barn, and I was I was concerned. Brother Russell, I was coming back down the ramp that we had an old freestyle barn that we didn't use anymore, but it had a. Does anybody know what a dredge pool is? It's a sewer tank for a cattle barn. Right. Yeah. Down at the end, we had the we had the dairy barn, and then there was a, a, a walk over, but there was a dredge pool, a big dredge pool out there, and I. Can anybody guess where the greenest grass on the farm was? It grew on the dredge pool. I was coming down the ramp to go back to the dairy barn. I couldn't find her anywhere. I called. I've got to get to milking. And Brother Daniel, I went by that dredge pool, and there was a snout sticking out. That's all I could see. Man! Man! Brother Todd, that, that cow... Because it was so hard for her to get out to the other grass, she, she, I guess she kept walking by that dredge pool every day thinking, why am I walking all the way out there with this bum foot when I can get some grass right there? Yeah. Do y'all want to... Well, here, here's what she did. We, we had an electric fence between the cows and that dredge pool. That fool cow walked all through that electric fence. <laughs> Ain't going to tell them the shocking she took. Going through this electric fence. I mean, it was cranked up by the sun. Probably a little bit too much. I don't tell Peter. She went through that electric fence. And I'm sure that grass was good at first. And, I, and, and for a while, there was about, about that much below the dreadful, there was concrete. But about four foot in, it drops off into the abyss. If you don't know what a dreadful is, find a country person after church and they'll explain it to you. All right? And you know what happened? She walked out there far enough to where the dredge pool could consume her. Yeah. You know what we're about to see happen to Lot? Yeah. He took the boundary down yeah. for the greener grass. Yeah. Yeah. And he ended up to here. Oh, the dredge yeah. Amen. That's where you're heading. Right. I, I spent too much time there. You pray for me. Ray, you got to recognize the what. we got to recognize the why. But we got to recognize the who. 
Lot didn't go into this text. We need to separate from Abraham. Yeah, sure. Somebody got in his ear. Right. There were some herdsmen that came over to Lot, some companions of Lot. They aren't related to Abraham. They don't love Abraham like Lot loves Abraham. They don't have a communion and fellowship with Abraham like Lot does. But you know what happened? They kept day after day getting into Lot's ear and saying, Hey, hey, don't you know it's a little tight around here? Hey, don't you know there, there's, there's some place down the road you can have all the land you want? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no boundaries over there. There's no bondage right. uh -oh. over there. Uh -oh. Don't you know that? Day after day. See, Lot would have never probably Abraham's been good to Lot. He's been he's been like a daddy to him. But Brother Allison, this is Abraham's been the best thing that's ever happened to Lot. Right. Amen. But because of those outside voices, there it is. eventually, it wasn't Abraham. It was Lot that got discontented with Abraham right. because of his hurt. Yeah. Can I tell you why some of you are discontented with this way? Because you've been you've been letting somebody have your ear that shouldn't have Come your on, ears. Richard. Hey, hey. You've been letting somebody on Facebook have your eye right. that right. you Richard. shouldn't let them have. Right. Yeah. You've been letting a family member come up. Hey, don't you know that you, you can go over here and go to church. There ain't no boundaries. There ain't no bondage. You're under so much bondage over there. I mean, you know, they get so emotional there. Hey, don't you don't you know you don't have to be under bondage? Can I tell y'all something? I was under bondage when I quit, quit, couldn't quit dipping snuff. I was under bondage when I couldn't quit uh, watching things I shouldn't watch. I, I was under bondage when I couldn't uh, have good, clean words coming out of my mouth. Oh, but I won't tell you that. Hey, living for Christ. Having separation, sanctification in my life. Hey, that's not bondage. Hey, it's liberty. I'm not even a bondage of sin anymore. Hey, because of the Lord. Because an old fashioned preacher and an old fashioned church told me how to live. And it wasn't to prove anything. It wasn't for glory. It wasn't to please the brethren. No, but it's because I love the Lord. Hey, I'm not under bondage tonight. Amen. Amen. Man, I gotta get on with this. I wonder who you're listening to. Good, good. You say, preacher, why is this so important? Look at the end of verse 37. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwell then in the land. Brother Todd, I wonder when the Perizzite and the Canaanite looked over and saw those two brothers fighting each other. I wonder what they thought. Hello? Yeah. I wonder if they wanted what they had. I wonder if they wanted to hear about the God that they was talking about right. when all they ever saw when they looked over there was Lot and Abraham was battling with each other. Yep. Mm. It does matter. I see. I gotta hurry. We gotta recognize. We gotta respond. I'm gonna be brief. And Abraham, verse eight, said unto Lot, "Let there be no strife. I pray thee between me and thee, and between thy herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren." So, preacher, how should we respond? How many of y'all ever had somebody that you poured your life into, gave, gave parts of your heart to, poured into, lived, labored with, and went on with, only to see them go the other direction? That's right. Yeah. Can I say this? I've not always treated them right while they were going. Right. Brother Van, here's the truth of the matter. When people leave, if they're saved, they're still our brother and sister in Christ. Right. Right. It's not my job to go to Facebook talk about about. Right. It's not my job uh, to go on social media and run them down. Amen. It's not Amen. my job from going to meeting to meeting or house to house or phone to phone and texting, talking, uh, ever, whatever you text and whatever, hey, or tweeting. It's not my job to run the brethren down. There are brethren out there I don't agree with. There are people out there I don't think they're going the right direction. But I'm t I'm going to be too busy about the Father's business to have any time to run anybody down. Hey, because it's a good chance that a lot of those people we disagree with and that leave our us and walk on our hearts on the way out, it's a good chance we'll meet them in glory one day and we're going to have to spend eternity with them and I want to treat them as good as I can with all that's within me while they're here. Hey, I'm not talking about compromise. I'm not talking about going with them. This is the exact opposite of that. I'm going to tell you, I'm talking about treating them like the brothers and sisters in Christ that they are. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 
My preacher said this many a times. He said, we can be friends with someone. Amen. Yeah. Well, or we can be friends to someone without being friends with somebody. Yeah. But Todd, there's people that's walked out of my life. And I could never... And can I tell y'all why I can't go with them? You, can I tell y'all why I can't stay as close to them once they go that route? I'm not even talking to the world about the world tonight. I know in the context Lot went to the world. Y'all understand that? Yeah. But I, I'm talking about going contemporary and changing their Bible and changing their clothes or, or the lack thereof. Right. Yeah. Or changing their, their, their music or changing their... Oh, can I get an amen right yeah. there? Yeah. I'm talking about that, the part. You know why I can't go with them anymore? Or eat? I can't go with them. I don't want those two babies sitting on the pew with my wife right. yes, sir. thinking that that's normal Christianity. Exactly. Right. Exactly right. Amen. I'm not mad at them. I, I, my heart, matter of fact, my heart breaks for them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Brother Ben, my heart breaks for them. When they go that way, it breaks. But I can, I've got friends I love, but they are not my bosom buddies because I, they claim Christianity, whether it's, it's, it's I'm talking about weak, weak. They claim Christianity, but I don't want my children thinking that's normal Christianity Amen. and that they can serve God and live for God like that. I don't want them to even entertain that. Amen. I'd rather hang out with a lost man because yeah. yes, at least we know he's lost. Yeah. Can I get an amen right amen. there? Amen. I don't want my children thinking that's right, but we got to respond right. How many times have they walked out? They get on Facebook, they run the pastor down, they run the church down, they accuse you of everything. Can I tell you the best, the best policy? It's found in 1 Thessalonians 4. Study to be quiet. You know who's seeing that? The Perizzites and the Canaanites. When we get on Facebook, and let me give you a piece of my mind. Don't do that. We ain't got much mind to spare. Don't give nobody a piece of your mind. We ain't got much to spare in here. All right? Somebody say amen right there. Amen. We need to keep all of it we can. If you ever see somebody get on Facebook and say, I don't normally say stuff like this on social media, but you can forget everything they just said. I know I'm a Christian, but just forget everything they just said. Yeah. Amen. Don't you do not have to defend yourself. Yeah, and if you get on Facebook and talk bad about them, if you get on Twitter and YouTube and talk bad about them, you are right. giving them fuel for their fodder. Yeah. That where there is no wood, the fire goeth out. Right. They want to be a victim. They want to have a way uh, to say, look at how mean they were to me. Look at how awful they were to me. See what I'm talking about. If we'll just leave them alone and pray for them and love them and right. treat them like brothers and sisters. You don't have to be friends with them, but you need to be friends to them. I'm telling you, leave them alone. Keep our mouth off of them. Hey, if I bring conviction to their heart and bring them back. I'm, I'm almost positive that there's people that's walked out of all our churches and they might not have, all, they might not have went out as far as they did if we would have kept our mouths off of them. Yeah. Guilty. Right. Right. Guilty. Guilty. Man, I killed it for the building. You pray for me. I see that we've got to recognize, we've got to respond, we've got to release Verses 9 through 13. Abraham says, Lot, you, whichever way you want to go, you take it. Lot, you take it all. Lot, I just want to retain my character and my integrity. I want to retain our relationship if I can. We might not be able to have the best fellowship, but I want to retain our relationship. Lot, you take the best. You pick. Lot, I, 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 you know what that's called? It's called taking the high road. Right. Amen. That's, not, that's biblical Christianity. Just taking the high road. Hey, tonight, many times, if they won't repent and get right, and they see that you won't go with them, they'll leave you and you won't have to leave them. Yeah. Just stay faithful. 
Just keep doing what you're doing and let them pick. Let them choose. Don't, put the, don't let them put the ball in your part. You plant your feet down in biblical Christianity and say, I'm not changing. By the grace of God, I'm not moving. I'm not giving up. My family's too important. My testimony's too, uh, too important. Hey, uh, my, my ministry's too important. Please, hey, serving God's too important to go with you. I love you. I appreciate you. You pick each way, any way you want to go. You take all the best of the land. You take everything. But I've got to stay in the boundaries God's put me in. Take the high road. Be sensitive to God. Listen, you don't have to defend your position. Time will tell on Let me ask you this. At the, end of this chapter, at the end of the book of Genesis, when the book's closed, who ends up better, Lot or Abraham? Huh? By the time we get to the end of chapter 19, Lot's wife's dead. His son-in-laws are dead. A bunch of his daughters are dead. And all he has is two daughters. And he may have gotten his daughters out of Sodom, but he never got Sodom out of his daughters. Y'all hear me tonight? Who ended up better? The, the man who, by whom all nations of the earth have been blessed? The man who the seed of the Messiah came through? Who ended up better? Lot or Abraham? Yeah, Abraham did because he didn't defend himself. He didn't fight with Lot. He said, you take the high. You take whatever you want. Just go. Just go. We got a release. I want to say this. If you'll do this, there'll be a reward. Look at verses 14 through 17. I want you to notice this. Y'all still with me? Say amen. amen. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Brother Van, this is the first time that God has spoke to Abraham since before he left for Egypt. Y'all see that? See, God gave Abraham, Abraham got the world out of his life, but there was something more than the world he needed to get out of his life. That wasn't just a what, it was a who. Y'all see that? Here's Abraham. He's all alone. We talk about chapter 11. His daddy died. Brother Jacob, at this point, they don't have any kids. He may never have kids. He's an old man here. He's still waiting on God. At this point, Lot, if you study chronological order or timeline and all these things, Lot and Abraham, I know he's his uncle, but they were, they were born the same year. I studied this out, brother man. They were born the same year, so it wasn't like an uncle, or, or like we think an uncle, maybe an uncle or a nephew or a father son kind of relationship. This was Abraham's best friend. I mean, here's Abraham in a foreign country. He can't speak the language. He doesn't know the people. And the only, the best friend he had in his life, he's already buried his daddy. He's already left his homeland. He may never have a son. Here he is in his old age. And God says, I want you to get rid of your best friend. I want you to separate from him. And Abraham's obedient. Abraham stays in the boundaries. And all of a sudden, God says, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Oh, can I tell you tonight? Everybody else might walk out. It may seem real lonely in Canaan sometimes. You might have to stick to the boundaries. You might have to fight some battles. You may have to shed some tears. Oh, what can I say? If the only person I'm living with and it's talking Amen. to me in Canaan is the Lord. Hey, that's a majority. That's not a minority. Hey, let the Amen. world go what they want to do. Let the church world go and live for the world and live carnally and make excuses for it. Oh, when I say sign me up for the spirit built life. Sign me up for Sign me up for the promised land. Hey, if God's the only one that will talk to me there, so be it. There's a reward to stay. There's a reward for doing right. And that's a smile of God on your face. Amen. Amen. Look at this. And the Lord said unto Abram, after the lot was separated from him. Look, now, now Brother Jacob, in verse number 9, Abraham told Lot, go to the left, and I'll go to the right. You go to the right, I'll go to the left. You go, you go up, I'll go down. You go down, I'll go up. But it seems like once says, God forgot about all that. Because look what God says. Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward, for all 
the land which thou seest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't Abraham just give all that to Lot? Yeah. Brother Russell, didn't, in, in humility and by taking the high road, didn't Abraham just, just turn all that over to Lot? Yeah. yeah, yeah, listen to me. You think separation's hard. You think separation's difficult. God's waiting for you to separate some things so he can give you everything. Oh, yeah. That's right. God is waiting for you to separate from some things and some who's and some what's so he can tell you to lift up your eyes. It may just be you and him standing in the field, but that'll be enough. He's going to say one day, look around. You can have all of this. All you had to do was get some things out so I could give you all this. And guess who it is today? I know the Palestinians are fighting. I know they're mad about the West Bank. I know they're mad about the Gaza Strip. I know there's the Dome of the Rock over there in Jerusalem tonight. Oh, neighbor, but I'm going to tell you right now, one day from Dan to Beersheba and more than that, Abraham's seed will rule that. You know why? Because Jesus Christ is a covenant keeper. And he's going to sit on the throne of his son David on that Dome of the Rock. And guess what? Abraham's seed is going to own everybody bit of this because all those years ago daddy was willing to separate Amen. Amen. God will reward you yes, for doing this Amen. Amen. separation just isn't moving away from things or what's or who's it's about moving towards God Amen and sometimes, see, some of you are waiting around for God to just bust the fire out of you and say, oh, if God, if you'll do this, this, and this, then I'll do this. That's not faith. Faith is, God, I'll do this because it's your principle whether you do anything or not. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The last thing tonight, there's a rescue. See, they go, don't they? They quit. They change. How many of y'all in here praying for a prodigal tonight? Lift your hand. How many of y'all praying for That's right. Hands up all over. And I'm praying for some of them with you. I don't know everybody's prodigal. But you hear me tonight. They may stomp on your heart. They may leave out. But how you treat them. Listen, listen. We're just as wrong treating them bad if they leave as they are for leaving. Listen to me tonight. They may stomp on your heart. They may go out. There, I don't have my phone. There may be a day when that phone rings. Yes. And they're calling you because you're the one that stayed in the boundaries. Yeah. They're calling you because you're the one that stayed in Canaan. Yes, sir. You're the one that didn't pull all the boundaries and the boundaries down. Hey, and they call you and say, hey, I need to come back. I need your help. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Chapter 14. Right. Lot's living in Sodom. Yeah. Those kings come in. Ravage the city. Take them away. You know what Lot does? He gets all his herdsmen together. All those people around Abraham that Lot didn't like and Lot left because and Lot was fighting with before he left. Those are the very ones that Abraham gathered together to go save Lot's behind. Yeah. Did I mention you need the local church? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You're here for here tonight. Or if you're away from God tonight, if you've left the land tonight, I promise you this church right here, they'll band together to help you get back. Right. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Listen to me now. Listen to me. Abraham left everything behind and went and did all he could to rescue Lot. And you know what Lot did? He got everything back. He went right back to Saul. Yeah. Sure did. See, Lot didn't get repentant. He got caught. Some of you won't get right tonight because you haven't got caught yet. Yeah. Right. That's not really really true repentance most of the time. Right. You're just sorry you got caught. Amen. You got mud on your face. Yeah. You know what? Me and Brother Jacob talked about this today too. You know what would be better if you uncovered it to God tonight instead of God having to uncover it to everybody else? Yes, sir. Be sure your sins find you out. Yeah. So we have a lesson here that there comes a day, Brother Todd, sometimes when there's a phone call and they say, I need your help. And you know what we need to do, no matter how bad they do to us. I'm waiting for some of them phone calls, by the way. By faith. Amen. Yeah. I'm, 
by faith, Brother Billy Ray. And I don't know how far they're going to have to go, and I don't know how much they're going to have to lose. But I'm waiting for some phone calls. To, and I, by the grace of God, I want to drop everything. And I want to go after them. Yeah. But you hear me tonight. Sometimes we do all we can and they still go back to the hog pen. Yes, sir. That's right. Can I tell you what? There's a chapter 18 as well. Yeah. Chapter 18, God comes. There's a Christophany. It's a pre-Calvary side. Or pre-incarnate side, side of the cross. He sits down at Abraham's place. They had some biscuits and Amen. Some steak together. Somebody say amen. Uh, yeah. I hope I had sweet tea. I don't know if that's in the originals, Brother sure. Todd. We're just going to pray about that. Did you hear me tonight? Abraham and God got to be friends. See, Abraham needed a friend, didn't he? Because he just gave up his best friend. And God said, that's all right. I'll be your friend. Amen. That's what God said, didn't he? Yeah. Hey, that's my friend. I, I won't tell him everything. Right. Oh, my goodness. Brother Gregory! Everybody else may forsake us, but I want him as my friend. Amen. And his friend, God, God told him that he was coming to rain judgment down on Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Well, who lives in Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, Lot did. Yes. And we see probably the greatest example of intercessory prayer in the Old Testament. Right. Abraham said, so what about this many? What about this many, God? What about this many, God? What if you can just find ten? Abraham agonized. Because see, here's, some, here's, here, here's, the, here's the point. Sometimes we do all we can and they go back to the hog water anyways. But it comes to a point where we're going to have to just give it over to God and let God do all He will. And God, because of the prayers of Abraham, literally sent angels down there and drug Lot, sorry carcass out. Can I tell you, and he lost everything. He lost it all. But God answered the man of God's prayer. Yes, Can I tell you, there come a day that that prodigal is going to call you. And they're going to say, I need help back. And you know what you need to do? You need to drop everything you can to help them. And they may come back and stay. Or you may have to face a chapter 18. Well, they go back and it gets worse. And God's about to wipe them out. But we've got to keep on our knees. We can't get bitter. We can't get angry. We can't get mad. I'm gonna, can, I, can I give an altar call? Can I say this tonight? I, I've, I've had to live some of this. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Because Brother Van, I've had to go back to some people that's walked out of my life. And not say I'm sorry for my stand, but say I'm sorry for my spirit. Yes, sir. Right. Sorry for my words. I'm, I'm sorry for what I said about you. I'm sorry for how I treated you. Lord, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't have a halo on the night. Brother Michael, I've had to go to some people that walked out and went the wrong way. And they're still the wrong way tonight. But you know why I had to do that? Number one, God dealt my heart about it. Brother Daniel, but number two, if they ever do decide to come back to the land, I hope I'm the one they call. Yes, sir. Are you the one they can call tonight? Have you been so hard on that prodigal? Have you beat them over the head so bad? I'm not talking about being burdened for them. I'm not talking about inviting them to church every so often or telling them you love them, you pray for them. But I'm talking about if you've been ugly to them talked down to them, been malicious to them. Maybe, maybe we're the reason they won't come back. It's all in how we treat them when they leave. Biblical separation from them. Let's all stay in heads without an eyes. Would you come This is not my favorite thing to preach. I wanted to come in here and preach something else. But I believe there's going to come a day when everybody in this room is going to face what I preach tonight. Or maybe we already have. How are we going to deal with it, Nick? How are we going to deal with it? There's still folks coming. Would you come this way?
Dzięki.